Hello everybody and welcome to JavaScript with Joe day 8. Uh, in this series we're going through the advent of code challenges. I try to aim it at people who've never programmed it before but that's normally way too ambitious um, so I'll probably get distracted part way through but I'll try and keep things easy um, and, and this should be sort of a nice refresher to some basic JavaScript stuff. Um, I'm using this website called REPLIT. If you use that, then you can write code. You don't need to install anything. You don't need to set anything up on your computer. So that's quite a good place to start with not only JavaScript, but Python, C Sharp, whatever it is you want to code in is probably on here. And uh, the challenge we're going to do today is from this website, Advent of Code. So every year, Advent of Code does 25 sort of holiday themed coding challenges in December. Um, and last year I tried to do one every single day and it was really, really stressful. So what I've decided to do this year is just stream one every week, uh, every Wednesday at 4 p.m. So there is an Eventbrite page for that. I don't know if it's in the chat, but you can register so you'll get updates if I change uh, the time. But if you don't want that, you can also subscribe here or you can just show up. They're all recorded anyway. Um, so let's get to it. Feel free to ask any questions if you do have any in the chat. There's no um, pressure for me to finish this. This definitely won't last more than an hour. So if we hit 5 p.m. UK time, I'll just uh, end the stream very abruptly. Um, but that's sometimes what happens. Sometimes these challenges are just way too hard uh, or too hard to be beaten in an hour or just too hard to be beaten by me. So let's see how it goes. So day eight, seven segment search. You barely reach the safety of the cave when the whale smashes into the cave mouth, collapsing it. Sensors indicate another exit to this cave at a much greater depth, so you have no choice but to press on. As your submarine slowly makes its way through the cave system, you notice that four seven segment oh sorry, that the four seven the four digit seven segment displays in your submarine are malfunctioning. So seven segment displays seem to be just normal sort of LED lights, it looks like. Um, they must have been damaged during the escape. You'll be in a lot of trouble without them, so you better figure out what's wrong. Each digit of a seven segment display is rendered by turning on or off seven segments named A through G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. <laughs> so to render a one, only segments C and F need to be turned on, as shown there. The rest would be off to render a seven, A, C, and F would be turned on. Okay. The problem is that the signals which control the segments have been mixed up on each display. The submarine is still trying to display numbers by producing output on signal wires A through G, but those wires are connected to segments randomly. Worse, the wire segment connections are mixed up separately for each four digit display. All of the digits within a display use the same connections though. Okay, well that sounds... <laughs> okay. I'm just going to make a note of this. So if I paste that in here, I won't be able to run this anymore because it's not valid JavaScript. But if I do control forward slash, or if I just add two forward slashes here, like that, that makes it a comment in JavaScript. So comments won't be run. This is how you can leave sort of little um, little notes for yourself. Cool. Well, this, this isn't Java today. This is JavaScript, Krimen, Chen. Um, they're not really similar, but if you, if you want to learn JavaScript, you can do here. <laughs> so you might know that only signal wires B and G are turned on, but that doesn't mean segments B and G are turned on. The only digit that uses two segments is one, so it must mean segments C and F are meant to be one. And with just that information, you still can't tell which wire B and G goes to which segment C and F. For that, we'll need to collect more information. For each display, you'll watch the changing signals for a while, make a note of all 10 unique signal patterns you see, and then write down a single four-digit output value, your puzzle input. So let's have a look at that. So this is the input we're given to try and solve. Jeez. Um, I'm not feeling good about this one, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it just, it's not going well. Okay, for each display, you watch the changing signals for a while, make a note of all 10 unique signal patterns you see, and then write down a single four-digit output value, your puzzle input. Using the signal patterns, you should be able to work out which pattern corresponds to which digit. 
For example, here's what you might see in a single entry in your notes. So this is going to be our, our test case probably as well. So I've set up this repo here uh, to already have space for the input as a text file. And I've left this little snippet in the top that can read that in. Um, I saw your note on comments earlier. So a comment is, is like a note to yourself. So if you wanted to leave the note to yourself, you know, two plus two, and then you ran that, JavaScript would evaluate that two plus two. Uh, it doesn't store it anywhere. But if you put those slashes there, that's what we call a comment in programming. So this just means that this is now a note just for us. JavaScript won't, won't try to run it. No language will try to run the comments, basically. Um, OK. The entry is wrapped here to two lines, so it fits. In your notes, it will be on a single line. It does seem impossible. I'm not feeling good about this one, Matt. Um, each entry consists of 10 unique signal patterns, a delimiter, and finally the four digit output value. So my interpretation there is that in this, this should be all of the numbers we need. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so this is our sort of our wiring, but the wiring isn't correct. Um, so the first clue we have is that only one uses two two of the wires. So we know that this these A and B must correspond to these C and F, but we don't know which way round it is. Um, and then in similar <laughs> in a similar regard, DAB uses three. So seven is the only number that uses three. So we now know that D, A and B and A and B must correspond. To, well, I guess we know from that A was the only one that was supposed to be added but in this D was the only one that was added. So we know that in this first line, A is D, right? That's the wire mix up. Um, and I guess from that, we can probably, there's probably gonna be something we can do to figure out <laughs> all of these, all of these mappings. Um, anyway, let me finish reading this. Um, oh, that's pretty much what they said anyway, delimiter connections used, but you don't know what the connections actually are. The unique signal patterns correspond to the 10 different ways the submarine tries to render a digit using the current. Because seven is the only one that uses three segments, DAB in the above example means that to render seven signal lines D, A, and B are on. Because four is the only one that uses four segments, E, A, F, B means that to render four signal lines E, A, F, and B are on. So that's, that's our clue is that we know how to render a seven, a one, and a four. And from that, we can probably start figuring some of them out anyway. <laughs> Using this information, you should be able to work out which combination of signal wires corresponds to each of the 10 digits. Then you can decode the four digit output value. Unfortunately, in the above, all of the digits in the output value use five segments and are more difficult to deduce. For now, focus on the easy digits. Consider this larger example. This seems crazy. That doesn't seem like an easier example. <laughs> Like, what is happening? I, I guess. Because the digits 1, 4, 7, and 8 use a unique number of segments, you should be able to tell which combinations of signals correspond to those digits, counting only the digits and the output values. That kind of makes sense. Um, this seems crazy. There are 26 instances of digits that use a unique number of segments. Oh, and all, okay, so for part one, all we need to do is get how many times one, four, seven, and eight appear. So that's not hard. So, well, it's hard, but um, it's going to be an easier start point. So that's what we're trying to answer. In the output values, how many times do these digits appear, which means that we just need to write something that reads this string in and counts these parts of the output. So we need to split it on this delimiter. Um, and then we just need to get the lengths of these things. So this isn't too bad. So I guess the next part is going to ask us probably to actually decode something and that's going to suck. Um, but this bit, I'm not feeling too bad about. They're quite generous there. So to start with, let's just read in this single line and store it as a variable. So to store a variable in JavaScript, we can either use the keyword const var or let and these all have slightly different meanings um, but in general I just say if you're not sure what to use probably just use var especially if you're new that's just our variable definition so let's stick with that today so we can do something like var 
my variable, let's actually call it something better than that, let's call it my name equals Joe. So this is our first variable declaration, and now we can access that variable whenever we want. We can even add things to that variable for more of a full name, or we can add that variable to itself. So there's a bunch of things we can do with variables like this. Let me zoom that in a bit. Um, and, and the way I often describe this is I don't know if you've ever like packed a bag or packed boxes to move or something, but I would say like if you're going to pack up a kitchen, you'd take a cardboard box and you'd write on the side of that box the word kitchen, and then inside the box you'd start putting things related to your kitchen, right? You might put your plates, your cups and stuff. But if you were talking to a friend, you might say, hey, give me that box that says kitchen on it. And you'd know to expect all those kitcheny values inside. And that's exactly what we're doing with variables. We're just trying to de decide the right thing to write on the side of the box to give like a nice sort of English representation of what's inside that box. So here I've called, I've got a box that's holding this string, Joe. And on the side of it, I've written my name. So that gives some context. You know, if I, if I wrote your name, it would have a different context. Um, and then something else you might notice there is these quotes around the string. So if I just wrote my name equals Joe without those quotes, we get an error and it says Joe is not defined. So what it's doing there is it's looking for a variable called Joe. And in order to actually denote that as a string, we have to wrap it in those quotes. So this is the first thing in JavaScript called a type. It's kind of a type. Um, so we can use this function type of and pass it that string and it will tell us it's a string in the same way it'll tell us that you know 12 is a number um, or the what is it true is a boolean so there's a bunch of different types that we can use and all these types have different methods there's, there's only i think six primitive types in javascript and those are three of them um, it just means that you know if i wanted to uppercase Joe, there's a function to do so. Dot to upper case. That gets an uppercase Joe. But if I call uppercase on a number, that just doesn't make sense because there is no uppercase for a number. It'll error. Um, so we start accessing these sort of useful functions that are built around these different types. Um, and then another one that we've not looked at yet is something called lists or what else do they call it? Arrays. So I could say like my ages could be the ages of all the people in this chat. If you want to give them to me, you don't have to. Um, so that could be a series of numbers, you know, 61, I don't know, 14, 35. So the difference here is that we're not just storing one piece of information, we're storing multiple pieces of information and we can actually nest these inside each other and do loads of really complicated stuff. So the, the, foundation of how I'm going to read this in is probably going to use some sort of list structure like this. Um, for the first one, there's only going to be one item because we only have one, but we know that our puzzle input is this, right? We've got to be able to process all of this stuff. Um, so eventually I'm going to try and write something that can do all that. So to start with, let's do, let's just see if we can even store this as a string. That makes sense. So my input is that as a string, and that all needs to be on one line. So now I can access that value in this REPL on the right, my input. Obviously, it's not great because I need more than, is there a space there? Yes. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't really help me because I can't do anything now. I've just got this big string. The first thing I need to do is get the outputs, right? So we're just looking for things on this side that have the numbers, have the length of two, three, four, or seven, I think. Um, at the moment, they're all five. So let's just see if we can even get it to tell us that these are all of length five. Um, and something I say a lot in programming is, is try and do what's the smallest next step we can do. So at this point, we've got our string read in the smallest next thing I need to do is just get this string on the right hand side. So we can do that by, there's a function of strings called split that we've not seen before, I think. Um, so I could have something like this, cat dog dot split. And that takes a parameter, which we've also not talked about. So when I'm using these round braces, these, these, this is a function. So the function is called split. And then inside those, 
those curly braces, we can put multiple parameters. So parameter one, parameter two, and different functions will require different parameters. But in this case, split will by default try and split on, um, I'm not sure what it splits on actually by default, but you can look it up in the docs. But if we pass it a parameter like that, so I just said split on everything. Now it's split every single character into its own element in the list, which I don't want to do, but I do want to split on a white space. And then I've got cat and dog. There's no white space. There's nothing weird happening. Now, how do we apply this to this? Well, I don't want anything from this point onwards. So I need something that can split there handily. They've already given us this delimiter. So if I split on that delimiter, so I do my input dot split on that delimiter, then what is this? I, it's so hard to even understand what this question is asking me to do. What does it call the things after the, delim the delimiter? All right, unique signal. Okay, that's our output value, which is kind of an annoying name as well, but let's do that bar output equals my input split on that delimiter oh and i only need the second item in this list so something we also haven't looked at yet is that i can have multiple values in a list and i can access individual items in that list so that's why this is quite a useful structure so if i say list and then we use those square brackets again this lets us access things by index. So if I say zero, I'll get the first item. If I say one, I'll get the second item. Two, I'll get the third item. And three, I won't get anything because there isn't a third item in the list starting from zero. So this is one of these things that different languages do differently. But in JavaScript, you access the first item using zero. It's, it's quite a sort of a trope in programming that that's the case anyway. So we've got, as we can see here, a list with two items, and I only want the second one. Um, so I'll do, if I just do output one, that will give me the second item in the list. So that's just my output values. That's looking pretty good. So I just need to add that here. So grab output values from input. So that's just, again, another common, a friendly note that I'm leaving myself. Next. That's not really looking great, is it? Because that's still, ooh. Why has it done that? Fire output. Oh, it should be getting the second item with one, sorry, not zero. Okay, so we've got just the items we need. So we could try and count the lengths of each of these, but we're kind of doing it over a string. It's a bit weird. So we still have more work to do. But again, we already know the pieces. We need that split function. And we can split on the white space and see what that does now. So I can actually chain these together, though. It's a bit messy. So if I do that and run it, I might have some extra white space I'm not expecting. But let's see. Yeah. So I shouldn't have this padded, this extra space here. But otherwise, it's looking pretty good. I think that's just because when I pasted it in, I added a, I added a line when, let's see, in this, in this, there will always be that white space there, but we can also just include that in our splitting. So it's not really a problem. So if I add that white space there, now that first one should be gone. And hopefully that is just always true. Okay, so now we've got the exact list we need. We've got the outputs with their wires turned on. So I guess output isn't really the right name. Um, but all we need to do now is convert this into a list of, of lengths. Um, so we can do this by iterating over the list. So let's do something like for, so it's our first for loop. Uh, for var index, well, I'll use i. i equals zero. i is less than output dot length. i plus plus. This is a something you should just get used to typing. This is the way to iterate over a list with a for loop. You do this all the time. 
Um, and let's do our first console log as well. Let's just see if we can write out each of these values one at a time. So that's not right. I've, I've printed out the index. So it's good that it's getting four of them. Um, but I need to do, again, same as before, access the output variable. And I need to get the item in that list at these indexes. There we go. So there's each of our items. Now, instead of that, we want the length. So I can get that just with that length property. There we go. So they're all five. So all we need to do now is just count the number of lengths of one, four, and seven. So for each, each item in that list that we're reading in, we've got the splitting, we've got the iterating over it but I only really want numbers I care about. For now, instead of using a for loop, I'm gonna use something called a map just to demonstrate something. So if I do output dot map, um, then I can do item, I don't know, I guess it's a digit to digit dot length. That will overwrite our array with those numbers. So now if I access output here, it's done the exact same thing, but in place. Yeah, it is quite, I mean, I, I can actually put the semicolons everywhere and it works. It's just JavaScript will sort of infer those semicolons for me. So it's exactly the same, but if they don't make a difference, you don't really need to put them in, right? So this is our first map function. We haven't seen these before, but it basically does the same thing as this for loop, but it does it inside the array. So what it's doing there is it's saying for each item in this output, declare that item as our, our variable digit and then replace it with digit.length. So it's a much sort of cleaner way of doing something similar. Get length of each digit. And also we could actually just apply a filter and then get the length of each of these variables as well. Um, since we know that we're only looking for, for these lengths, one, four, seven, and eight, that's not true, is it? We're looking for lengths. Um, filtered, let's call it filtered outputs equals output dot filter. Very similar, so for each digit, we want to get a condition where it's true. If digit.length equals um, two for one, because <laughs> there's two wires turned on for one, then we can do an or digit.length equals three, which is seven. Yeah, this is definitely going to go wrong. I'm already not feeling good about this. Digit dot length equals equals, what was the next one? Four was the next one with unique number four. And then eight was the next one, which has seven on, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Or digit dot length equals equals seven. I can actually just return that weirdly, but let's just keep it separate, return true. So in this case, if it's true, it will keep it in the array. And if it's not true, it'll, it'll take it out of the array. I've just seen your question. Sorry. What does map do? So in the same way we had this for loop here, we had to, we had to write all this logic up here. We had to declare a counter. We had to set the end term for that counter. And then we had to increment that counter all just to log out the items in that list. If we instead said something like var digit equals output i dot length, oh no, just output i, sorry, and then did digit dot length, you can see that basically this line is this line and this line is this line. So map is just a sort of, it's a, it's a newer function. It's a, it's a way to iterate over the items in a list without needing to do all this stuff. And you can see that it's just sort of 
much quicker and it's supposed to be easier to read um but it, it depends on what you write in it but to me that just means you know for every item in output return the length of that item and then there's another function called filter that will return the item only if the function returns true so with this one it should only return an array with the numbers sorry with what with outputs that have the length of two or three or four or seven um, which should basically give us lists that we can that we can basically calculate the length of um, it's not it's not easy stuff i mean this is a problem i try and make this really low level but then we have to get to this point really quickly but like i say there's there's like nine of these videos on the youtube channel as well so you, you're welcome to watch all of those if you want to Okay, let's see if this works anyway. So it should give me an empty array on filtered outputs now. Because they're all five. Um, almost at the halfway point now as well, so I'm not expecting much to, much to happen here. Um, happening ah oh, that's not even invalid it's not a variable So yeah, we've got an empty array there. I guess if I change this to be something like this, we probably get some valid ones at the end. Oh no. <laughs> if digit, oh, because we don't need the digit lengths anymore, that's why, because we've already calculated the lengths. There we go. Okay, so next we just need to modify that so that it reads in some real data. So to start with, let's just take some lines and we can see there that we should at least be getting, you know, that one, that one, that one, these should all be coming through. Um, and now we can try and read in from a real file. So I've left, I've left a snippet in here at the top that you can use. So this is FS for file system. That lets you read in a file, and I've already set it up to read in line by line from the input.txt in this REPL. Um, and then we can store our value in there. So we can say my inputs is uh, we've already got an input variable. Let's just see what that looks like. Yeah, so that's got three items in it, one corresponding to each line in that file. So now we need to basically apply this to each line in that file. So we can say, I guess this is where a for loop kind of makes sense. Does it? I don't think it does. We just need to do this for each item in the list. So I can say input <laughs> equals, I guess let's call it, let's stick with that pattern, var outputs equals input dot map and then that just needs this function map line line dot split and then we shouldn't need that anymore i guess let's keep these things commented out for now and let's just see if we can add these things one at a time so now I'm expecting to have all of just the outputs. So if I look at input, I've got everything. If I look at outputs, I've got three lines of just the outputs from those files. So we can see there, that is that line there. Right next, I need to, so I don't need this line splitting it anymore. I don't need this for loop anymore because that was just for demoing. So I need to get the length of each digit in each item in outputs. 
So. Or I could do that here. Well, that feels pretty rubbish. So I could do something like outputs. So here's another function we haven't seen. I could do for each. And then this follows a very similar pattern. For each output, then return. I think that might work, but I'm not sure. So let's, I might have to overwrite it actually. Oh, I didn't. No, I'm not very confident now. <laughs> let's see what that does anyway. Yeah, they're still the same because this isn't overwriting each item because it's a for each, so it wouldn't. If it was a map, that work? No. So how am I going to actually do this? I need to say for each output. I need to say like outputs. No, this should be, let's do this as a for loop then. The for each should work, but I'm struggling a bit. For bar outputs, no, for i, for zero, i is less than outputs.length. I plus plus, so this will now iterate over each of those lines one at a time for us. Let's just log out. Let's do bar line equals equals outputs dot no outputs i and then let's just log out each line one at a time. So there's our line. So in here we should be able to map over each line so we should be able to do that with just this bit here that should give us just our numbers and then now we just need to figure out how many of those numbers and numbers we're looking for so we're looking for two three four and eight though there isn't an eight in there oh no we're looking for seven sorry which isn't there <laughs> um so let's store this as var to know no of buyers is that and then we can apply this other function here maybe we should actually write this as a function let's say const um, get uh, get nums equals no of wires and then this can all be return no of wires dot filter oh. so I've just wrapped that in a function name so now we should be able to use the get nums function pass it a number of wires and get the numbers that we care about back so in here let, let's just try it in the console log actually um, get nums no of wires. Oh no, can I access get nums? That's because this needs to be initialized above it, or I shouldn't have used const. Maybe I'll call it bars as well. Okay, there we go. So now we've only got the numbers for 7432 that we care about. So it's rejected any of those extra ones. So if we go back to just this input, it should still run, but it should give us nothing. Ooh. Oh, no, no, I changed it. There we go. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. We don't actually have our answer, right? That was how many times do those digits appear. So we need something that keeps track of those as well. So before this, let's do a bar no of no digit. I don't know what to call that. 
kind of want to call it like number of ones, threes, fours, and sorry, ones, fours, and sevens and eights. Zero. And then we want to add into that the length of this array now. So to total plus, plus equals this, this equals this. And then I should just be able to log this out as it goes as well. Let's do that. And let's log it at the end, which should be our official answer. And then let's log out the number of wires while we're there, just so we can see it growing. So we've only got one and it's added the actual array. It shouldn't be that, it should be the length of that array. There we go. So we got two, which is, we found a two, we found a three, so that's looking good. Let's try the first three lines in here. So we've got a seven, a four, a two, and a three. But these are the number of wires we're using. So that's an eight, that's a four, that's a one, that's a seven. So these ones just seem to be combinations of just, no, here we go, here's the difference. So we have a five here, so it only added three. We have a five here, so it only added three, so that's fine. Okay, I think we're ready to try and submit them. Let's see what happens. I mean, we've got there 200 inputs now. And there's our answer, 514. Let's see if that works. Now, there we go, that's the right answer, so we did it. It's a bit of a mess, but that's not too surprising, and I'm definitely getting, ironically, some wires crossed here because I'm kind of mapping between like the number of wires used and real numbers. Um, so what always happens in Advent of Code is they normally give you a second part to the challenge that will just punish you if you took any cut corners in the first half. I'm hoping they knew this one was too hard because that first half was way too easy. Okay, through a little deduction, you should be able to determine the remaining digits. Consider again the first example above. After some careful analysis, the mapping between signal wires and segments only makes sense in the following configuration. Okay, so they're giving us the mappings for that line, I think. So the unique signal patterns which correspond to each one. Is there an order to these? Doesn't look like it. Then the four digits of the output values can be decoded. So they always seem to be in, they don't seem to be in the same order actually. So the order doesn't matter, but that kind of makes sense. Following the same process for each entry in the second larger example above, the output value of each entry can be determined. Adding all of the output values produces a number. So what do we get if we add up all the output values? So it just got way harder. I'm not sure we'll get this done in the next 20 minutes, but we'll see. Um, now, they wouldn't have made us do all this if it wasn't going to help us, hopefully. So we have got a separation between the inputs and the outputs. These are our wire codes. So now we need to look at the first half of it instead of the second half. So let's look at this. I'm going to comment all this out as useful as it might be. I guess what we do know is the encodings for those digits, right? That's kind of our clue. So let's reduce this back down to just one line. Let's take that first line only. And let's comment out all these bits. So we should be able to, just from this, we should be able to just look at this and say, okay, that one is, oh, there's an extra input. 
Oh, because my split goes the other way now. Right. So I should just be able to look at this and say, so CG corresponds to one, AGC corresponds to seven, CGDF corresponds to four, and the longest one corresponds to eight. So we have to use that to figure out the, oh, I don't like this at all. So I guess some numbers are just probably subsets of other numbers. This is going to be the diagram that's going to help make this possible. Um, yeah, I mean, like looking at seven, three is just seven with two other numbers, two other letters. Nine is seven with three others. So we can kind of figure out what's overlapping zeros or so. Yeah, that's the next bit to do, I guess. I don't know seems kind of weird <laughs> it's just it's definitely too too hard for the next 20 minutes but we'll see how close we get okay so for each number of outputs i guess we could start building up like a mapping object so we can have like an object like this of i don't know i could call it like wires to wires to nums equals and then for this example, I should start building an object that's something like this, like CG is one, it must be. And then actually we could go like the other way around and we could do like, I don't know what this one is yet. I'll leave it empty and just do that for all the numbers starting to zero. So this is an object. We haven't seen one of these before. It's kind of like a list, except we have named keys instead of indexed keys. So I can actually access items in this list using these named keys, which happen to be numbers at the moment. So if I do this and I say wires to nums dot zero, I probably can't use that because it's a, because it's a number. Yeah, that's not too surprising. Wires to nums. Maybe I should use the word zero. One, two. Apologies if I'm failing to explain any of what's happening now. I'm just going to see how far I can get with this one. <laughs> Five. Six. So basically we want to build up this object for every single line and come up with some clever trick that gets us the rest of the way there, I suppose. So I should be able to go wise to nums dot zero and it gives me that empty string. So if I had figured out CG there, then this will be a way to get those numbers from this object. Um, so let's just log out our outputs as we were doing before. So the first thing I want to do with this object is go, okay, this one has a length of two, so it must be our one. So let's bring back this object and instead of filtering, ooh, I could still use the filter, it's a bit overkill. Because really what I want to do is like iterate over this and just if the length is something, do this. So have I got that for loop somewhere else? Get length of each digit. And add to total. Let's bring back this whole loop here. And let's just do comment out that we're definitely not going to need these wire lengths and totals right now and let's just do console.log line so that should just print everything out on one line now here okay and then we can say instead of mapping that doesn't really make sense now I need another for loop and I'll say for denote 
number no bar num equals zero um is no that doesn't make sense either for x equals zero zero is less than line dot length now so we're just iterating over just these numbers here x plus plus and then i'm going to say in here console dot log line x which will be like one combination of wires so you know wires it's like wires switched on or something wires equals line x apologies i didn't declare that variable and now we should see each of them on one line. Oh. <laughs> y is equals line x. It's not even terminating as well, so that's not. x equals 0, x is less than line length. What is line length? So that should have terminated really quickly. Four x equals zero. Zero is less than ten. X is less than ten. <laughs> That's why it was running forever because I just said end this when zero is not less than ten. There we go. So now I could just write some like, I guess I could do like a switch statement here and say switch on wires dot length case two, which is which is CG. Um, oh, sorry, just writing Python again, case two. is right there case two um <laughs> why is two nums why is two nums dot one is equal to wires this wire 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 no because it's a collection of wires wires makes sense i think so now if i look at our wires to nums one is cg okay so that's working next the case of it being three is wires to nums dot seven equals wires wires to nums so now we've got, oh, I need a break there, a break there. So this is called a switch statement. I'm not going to explain this because I've only got about 10 minutes left, but have a look at it if you want to. It's basically like a glorified if statement. There we go. Seven and one. And I kind of know that c and g must be the side ones so i know now that a is the top position how am i going to represent that i should probably store that somewhere as well oh so that's kind of like it was like a wire map as well it's like old to, i don't know what to call that like old to new wires and then that can be an object as well so i could say that like this should be the mappings from 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 new to get back to the old ones so it should be new to old wires so i should now know that what was a what was a originally is now a so i should be doing something like that making this object so b so I don't know what B's gone to. This is just a very good way to not. Okay. 
No, get out of here, Naked HD XYZ. You're always on my channel. You've ruined my live streams again. Okay. Um, so we've got case. Should we deal with this? No, let's not do that. Let's gather our information here. Gather obvious mappings. And then we can deal with the in intuiting the other ones later with some more clever stuff. But we'll need this in a bit. Um, the next case was four. Case four. And that is, oops, case four. Why is two nums? Y is two nums, four equals wires. And then the last case is case eight. Wires. It's not eight. It's seven. And seven is eight equals wires. Um, and then break out of that. And then we need a default case, I believe. So just called default. Might just be default with that. Uh, so this is if it's not two, three, four, or seven, what else is it? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. No, let's just log no info. Um, just so that something is happening there. Okay, so now we should have a good wise to nums object. Cool, so we've got one, four, seven, and eight. Next, we need to try and intuit something from these ones. Um, and then also, like, we need to, they don't even have to be in the same order, so we can't just use them as is. We kind of need to check for a match, which I don't like either. Um, okay, so what's the next one we can intuit from one? Well, we know we should be able to at least extract from seven and one alone what this A, what maps to A. Um, <laughs> so we need to find like what character is in, what character is in seven, which isn't in one. And we can also do the same for four. So we'll get two parts. What car is in four that isn't in seven. Okay. So we can use our we can use our splits. Kind of want to use sets here to find something that's in one, and not in the other one. So I can do. Let's just do it over here for a little bit. So cg dot split. So I can use that function now to get just c and g. That's not particularly useful because I'll have a g c. So let's call that one. 1 equals cg dot split and let's say 7 is equal to what was it agc dot split and now what do I do <laughs> I mean I can iterate over the 7 and find the one that's not in there that seems kind of weird I can use Part of me wants to use like JavaScript sets because I know I could just take one away from the other one. So a set will have like unique numbers. So I can, can I like, I can like delete the numbers from one that are in the other, which could be fun. Can I do that? Like one equals new set one. So now I have the set one, <laughs> okay, and then I can do seven equals set seven, seven equals new set seven, convert that to a set. Now, now I have these, I think I can take one away from the other, so I think I can do like a subtract, like subtract, oh no I can't, because I kind of want to do like get like the, you know, if these were like a Venn diagram, then I have like A and, sorry, C and G in the center of that Venn diagram. And then this one just has A and that's the number I want. So 
Here we go. Uh, there's a difference function here, perfect. I feel like that should already be in, in JavaScript, but that's okay. Can I paste that in? Oh, yeah, I'm trying to define it. Difference is not defined. Ah, oh, lost my things. <laughs> um, let's recreate those down here. So I had one equals new set that had in a, a list of, what was it? C and G will probably end in about three or three or three minutes. Um, but we'll just see if we can get this difference to work anyway. 7 equals new set, it was A, G, C. Now I should just be able to call this difference function. So let's just see if that even loads. So I should just be able to do difference 1, 7. Ah! <laughs> What's wrong with that? 7, hey. Return the difference, but it just returned an empty set, so it's not difference. What am I looking for here? I think it is difference. No, because that should give me, okay, that's not the right one. Try this one. This difference isn't what I wanted. So seven uh, move or seven one. Oh, <laughs> this doesn't even have a, re a return. Oh, it's already it's done it to my original set. That's not particularly. That's not exactly what I wanted, but it did it. Okay, so with <laughs> with all this, I can get, I should be able to put new to old, so I know A maps to A, I guess in this case. Okay. Terrible. Right, so I can call that function now, remove all seven, one, which means that seven now has I want, the item I want, how do I get that? I even access that item? How do I get the items from? Okay. I shouldn't have gone into the sets. This was a bad idea. So now I should have this first variable, which is A. Okay, that's what I wanted. So now I can put that in my new to old wires. And I can say new to old wires dot A is equal to first. And now I have new to old wires. I've got A maps to A and I've got, what was this other one? wires to nums. So I'm not even close to having that finished. I've got one of the mappings and I've got four of the four of the codes. I mean these don't even need to be in the same order so I'd need to write something like that. I'd probably use sets for that again anyway. Um, but I think I'll leave it there. So I hope that's been useful to somebody. That's definitely devolved into chaos. I would recommend, if you watched the one from last week, I actually finished the whole thing in about half an hour, so it might be a bit easier to follow. Um, and apologies, I know there's some people here who have never done JavaScript before that have probably just watched me 
whiz through a bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, hopefully see you again next week. Bye-bye.